Greetings and salutations to my esteemed guests and subscribers. It is me, of course, LL here, and today I'm gonna be introducing you guys to the Orbit Chain, or more specifically, to the Orbit Bridge, which allows you to bridge your assets from one chain to another. And this is a very useful tool. Uh, earlier on the channel, we talked about X Pollinate, which is a stable coin swapper, but Orbit actually has a lot more chains available and also a lot more assets that you can bridge between certain specific chains. But without further ado, let's kind of get started here. Um, how you exactly are doing this and I guess a bit about background of Orbit Chain and this is using the IBC technology which is used also by Cosmos and this allows you to have a decentralized system where you are bridging one asset from one chain to another as i said there are a lot of bridges which are actually custodial which are not truly decentralized and that's where orbit chain is a very uh, nice player in the space allowing you to basically bridge uh, wrap btc xrp or ethereum between different chains but now I kind of want to jump into the actual app here and this is what the interface looks like. And since this is a tutorial, I tried to include everything possible for the beginners here who have never done this before. So the first thing you are going to be doing is selecting the coin that you are obviously going to be bridging from one chain to another. And there are a lot of different opportunities here. We have the Orbit Chain's own token, Ethereum, Rep BTC. Um, XRP, USDT, uh, DAI, ICON, and many, 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 many others. But uh, most of them are Ethereum assets. And depending on what you're going to be choosing, there are going to be a different uh, selection of different uh, chains where you can bridge into. So, for instance, let's say we're going to be choosing USDT and we're going to be clicking OK. And now there's going to be a validator group. These are basically, you know, the people who are going to be validating the authenticity of that transaction. Obviously, there's big players here, Terra, for instance, Clayton, etc. And you can actually choose anything here. It just shows you which are the validators here. You click OK. Then you get to choose the chain from which you are transferring the USDT from. And for USDT, there's four options. We have Ethereum, we have Icon, Clayton, and Orbit. Let's say we're going to be choosing Ethereum. Now it gives you the option for what wallet you're going to be connecting with. We are going to be choosing MetaMask. There's obviously multiple more for depending on what chain you are going to be using. So clicking OK. And now obviously we have to check in that we are logged into the MetaMask and we have chosen the right chain. So going back to the Ethereum mainnet, refreshing the page and doing everything. Uh, sadly, doesn't actually remember the settings we just chose. So back to the USDT. OK, selecting the chain Ethereum, MetaMask. OK, and now we are connected. Then you have to do an approval. I'm not going to be doing this now because uh, I'm not going to be doing this example on Ethereum due to the fact that the gas fees are pretty high. Obviously, bridging is going to be costing you money and you have to be really smart about these things, how you are going to be and what are you going to be exactly transferring. So um, instead, I will be transfering the Binance Smart Chain's uh, token BMB, the native token of Binance Smart Chain. And here, once again, we have the validators that is the almost the same as or maybe the very same and clicking OK. And here we get to choose the chain. As you can see, we chose a different coin and now we have a different selection where we can basically transfer. We even have uh, the Huobi Eco chain here and we have Polygon. But now I have but the Binance Smart Chain. I'm going to be choosing that. But before we're going to be logging in with MetaMask, I'm going to be going back to changing an Ethereum mainnet into Binance Chain and clicking MetaMask OK, voila, and now I see my BNB balance here, 56 BNB, and I want to just move a very small sum into Polygon. I don't really do anything with the BNB on Polygon, to be honest, but it is going to be just there for this test. And now we choose the chain that we are transferring it to for different options. Uh, we're going to be doing it on Polygon. And this is the cool thing about with a lot of other bridges, it doesn't necessarily allow you to change 
the address that you're sending it to. Now, this is important because when we are changing, obviously, chains in MetaMask, the address is always staying the same, usually with other bridges. Now we have the opportunity to send that BMB into another address. But since we don't need to do that, um, I'm just going to be using my uh, address, which I would be normally using. So I will be using this. Now we're going to be doing convert now. And it here it shows you from Binance Smart Chain to Matic, aka Polygon, and it will be called PBMB. Confirm. Now we are going to be paying the gas on the BMB side, and it's going to be a pretty relatively low. It's going to be sending it to an address. The transaction um, is going to be taking some time to obviously complete. Another reason I chose a bit of faster chains here is because the video won't be ending up 15 minutes about waiting till Ethereum. Uh, okay, the conversion has been uh, completed and we can see the TX history and I can see, we can paste in the address here and here we can see the confirmation a few seconds ago and I can open up my Polygon address here for the observation and see whatever there is that money already. Um, likely not so fast. It usually takes up some time uh, to basically get up there. Um, so far, not yet. And the transaction has at least from uh, confirmed in the uh, Binance side of things. Now it goes to the Orbit chain and there it confirmations there. And then it will be ending up on Polygon. So there is a process here. Uh, which will be um, happening. Let me actually see if I have done pa transactions in the past. So here you can see the transaction somebody has sent uh, from Ethereum to the Claydon blockchain, um, the ORC, which is the native token. And then there's the validator agreement. So let's say we open up that from Ethereum. We can look at how long does this actually take? Obviously, Ethereum is very slow, but so here um, we have, you know, one hour and 15 minutes ago, the transactions left from Ethereum. And then on 16.22, it went to the Orbit chain. What was that actually that time here? Um, so five minutes, five minutes later, it went to the Orbit chain. And then lastly, it ended up on Clayton, which was the, you know, the address we needed to go to. And where do we see actually the uh, one hour ago? So this is on 22. So very, very fast, actually, in five minutes, the transaction went through from one chain, from one bridge to another. So that's how you basically use the Orbit bridge. Um, and as I said, it, it takes a bit of time. Uh, and there's going to be more chains added, more assets added to this. And it's a pretty secure, one of the better bridges that you can currently use right now. But obviously, you, there's other options there, which may be slightly faster. Xpollinate is pretty fast. And obviously, all of them have different chains available. So depending what you use, it may have this chain and this asset available. So you have to think about what is going to be the fast way and what is also going to be the cheapest way to basically transfer assets between um, in these chains and I'm pretty sure that Orbit doesn't take any fees in between when you are going to be bridging those assets and um, Here we have okay. Look at this. So the transaction has now completed on Matic and Here we can see that the Orbit bridge P PMB and B is now available on on my address So I should be able to see it now When we go into the asset so here as a two minutes ago the, the token just confirmed and let me go back into opening up the Matic here. Uh, this page, oh, okay, here we have the Orbit Bridge. So now we have the Binance uh, coin is now available on Polygon. So that's how easy and fast basically it is to bridge your assets over the Orbit Bridge. And obviously there are other options here such as um, when we choose ORC and select the chains. We have things like Icon and Clayton. And I can like, for example, log in with my Kaikas wallet. And if I send to Icon, 
uh, well, then I don't actually need to log in with that. Only you need to log in with the ones that you are going to be sending money from. But hopefully you found this tutorial useful and you learned something here. And maybe this will help out for you to bridge out some certain stable coins or Ethereum, for instance, to other chains where you can access perhaps better liquidity opportunities or just cheaper transactions altogether. Uh, thanks for watching. Obviously, you can drop me an email at lightliger at protomail.com for business inquiries. And I will be seeing you guys on the next video. As a reminder, in case you know some other bridge websites, I would love to talk about them also in the future in the channel. So make sure you drop your comments in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.